once you get those exactly positioned, now if you go back to your perspective view and take a look from in here, it's working out pretty well. Um, so I could just move that over a touch. And there we go, I've got my roof. Um, and then I can take my roof and duplicate my roof, and I've got my um, floor, if I need a floor. Most of the time your uh, building will be intersecting with the ground, so you won't actually need to have a floor. But if you do need to have a floor, you can just duplicate the roof. Um, and then what I do now uh, is I would take this building and um, I would first create a group out of this. So let's just go back into the network view here and order the network again to make it all look good here. And then I'll select those, or I'll select one of these guys uh, just to make a peg out of it because you want to control the entire thing with one peg and I'll call this my building building peg and so you can connect that to all of the elements there so the roofs and then the walls and you will also on your peg there enable 3D on it so that you can move that building around in 3D and then I would also go in here and add a composite just for this building and then I'll put it inside the group so first I'll just add the composite and I'll connect these layers together um, some people prefer to um, group first and then put the composite. It doesn't really matter. I just like to do it this way because then everything is nice and clean. I can turn my, compa my composite here to pass through so that it doesn't really do anything. And now um, I can select the building peg and my layers and my composite. And then I can hit um, Command or Control G for group. And actually, that didn't work, so it's, uh, yeah, it should be Command-G, so I think for some reason my shortcut wasn't working there, but, um, and now that you have it in a group, it's much easier to select that, um, and you can even put an additional peg here outside the group if you want one, and um, this additional peg could also be set to 3D, so if you just want to grab that peg instead, and then you might want to take your rotate tool there and just move the pivot point of the building to the bottom side of the building, so that if you go in there and move this guy around, it's in the right spot. So um, if you want to move your rotate tool like perfectly, you'll do it in your top view and in your side view to get it where it belongs. Um, so now when you move your building around, it's really moving around from the center point there of the building. Okay, so that is really the, um, the whole session there for working in a 3D space when you're working only with 2D objects. Um, let's just finish up here by um, taking this building and integrating it into a scene here. So maybe I'll scale it down a little bit. And maybe I'll even take this entire group here and duplicate it so that I can have a couple of buildings. Um, you might want to have buildings, of course, that look different so that you don't have them all that look the same. But just for the purpose of this exercise here, I'll just duplicate a few buildings that all look the same and then I'll pretend that I'm making a bit of a city block here. Um, so maybe I'll even take both of those at the same time and we'll duplicate them out um, and then move them back. And move that one back. There we go. So I've got now four buildings in a row there. Um, I could take this group here, duplicate that one. and move that one back. So when you actually zoom around this fake city here, this faux city now, um, you really do see that 3D aspect to it. Um, this is like a really boring <laughs> condo complex or something where all the buildings look the same. But um, just imagine if you did do some buildings that looked a bit different, then you would be able to get more of a 3D sense here. But the important part, again, is when you animate your camera and also when you integrate in some of that multiplane. So um, I'll just turn back on my, my layers here. Um, maybe I'll turn the close one off, but let's leave the mid and the far one on. And let's turn on my camera move here and see what happens when I, when I move through this. So um, when you're dealing with something like a background in the middle of, of a cityscape like this, you might want to take your background as well and um, rotate this guy in 3D space. So at least the ground plane, whatever is acting as your ground plane, should kind of intersect the buildings, um, you know, where they're 
where their uh, bottoms are there. And um, so it probably should just be one big old flat plane here. So if I zoom out in my perspective view and I take a look at this from the top, um, I really just want this to be a big flat plane so I can scale it out in that direction and I can just move it here so that it's one big flat plane there. And then you can take that um, far, far one there from the top view and let's move it back even farther so it's really far back. And then now if we, if we zoom through this um, and let's play with our camera again here, um, even when you're doing a 2D camera move now, you see that when you do a, a 2D camera move through a 3D space, um, then you do get that sense now of it being a real 3D space. And on top of that now, um, if you do want to do a 3D camera move, you can double click on your camera peg and you can enable 3D on your camera peg as well. And when you do that, the only difference is now it allows you to rotate the camera in, um, in this direction as well. So this is how you do your full 3D camera. So you can rotate it in this direction and you can rotate it in this direction, in X. So um, if you do want to get that real, let's say you're establishing shot, you know, like I was talking about before, sometimes you want to start from really far away so you can zoom out on your camera there. Uh, pretend that my background fills my screen because you always want to make sure your background fills your screen, but a really um, typical establishing shot is one that is looking down from above on the area that you're looking at. So let's just sort of move this over here. Maybe I'm zoomed out a little bit too far so I can zoom back in again by scaling on, this or on that square there and then bring it down. So let's say this is my typical establishing shot. I'm looking from far away and I'm going to zoom in on my character who let's say is standing on this uh, building's roof here. So I might want to just zoom in all the way to where my character is standing over here. And um, it looks like things get distorted when you look outside the camera view when you're working in 3D. And it's simply because of the aspects of the camera um, that it kind of appears that way when you look around the outside. Of course, if you look in your perspective view, the perspective view never shows that kind of distortion. And it never shows it inside your camera view either. In other words, if you look on your camera tool there and then you turn on the camera mask, it never looks distorted within the camera mask. It's only outside the camera mask that it looks distorted. So now if we zoom in on this, we look through this, we have our full 3D camera move there where we have our establishing shot from far away on the city. And then we're going to zoom in onto the roof where our character is standing. So let's leave that there for this week. Um, I think that's a lot of information. And then I will come back at you next week and we'll talk about integrating 3D models into your scenes. And we'll talk about what happens when you do a 3D camera move, when you have a layer, a 2D layer that you need to keep um, perpendicular to the camera. And um, so I'll leave that for next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye.